a lot of people who do listen to this podcast are always fascinated by people who are non-monogamous. So do you guys ever experience any jealousy, any insecurity? And if that does come up, how do you handle that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's, I'm glad that you segued into that. Cause I was going to say like, it's not without work. Like polyamory is of any kind is not for the pain of heart, <laughs> you know, like, like if you don't like talking or if talking or intimacy is difficult for you in relationship, like poly might not be for you. You know, like the people think, I think on the outside that it means like, oh, you just like go and like got to get to have lots of boyfriends or girlfriends or get to have a lot of sex and it's really easy. And it's like, it's not like that at all. You know, it's a lot of talking it's a lot of excavation. It's a lot of shadow work. It's a lot of building trust. And, um, and the same is true of sex work, you know, like we, we had to do it for both, you know, we, for me, um, you know, I've experienced a lot of really challenging things in my life, especially when I was a young person, which makes has made trust in relationship hard for me, even mm -hmm. if the person is entirely trustworthy, like Cameron is like the most trustworthy person that I've ever met, you know, and yet that historical stuff will come forward, you know, and it comes forward, whether it's in, around polyamory and actual relationships, and it even comes forward sometimes like when Cameron goes to work you know, and what it does is it gives me the opportunity to develop the skills of reparenting and like settling the parts of me that are like, oh my God, are they going to come back? Oh my God, do they still love me? Like, oh my God. It's like, and it's just, it's funny because like yeah, they giggle, come back I've and they always come back. Yeah. Well, I've they always, always come, come back. back. <laughs> they tell me the story and then all the feelings are gone. Like, I'm just like, oh, okay. You're right. 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 It's just work. Or like, oh, right, yeah, you went on a date and it's cool. And like, you still love me and like, here we are in our life. <laughs> I guess we should probably make dinner for the kids or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one thing I've definitely noticed from my experience of, you know, working with uh, polyamorous people or swingers or what have you is the incredible level of communication between the couple, which I think is probably a lot of people lack in their relationships. And I think that that's a huge downfall in a lot of relationships is the fact that people don't communicate. So, um, you know, the way that you guys have constructed your relationship, you know, forces, as you said, this level of communication that probably keeps you guys, um, honest with each other and keeps you guys, it's almost like the glue that holds you guys together in a way, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there, there. I mean, certainly in our work life, first and foremost, because that's how we keep a roof over our head, right? Mm. Um, that comes up, but even in our personal life, we have to have a level of honesty and disclosure, and just, you know, there's been times when we've been like sitting at a bar before and been like that dude's hot and then we both be like yeah he's hot you know like and like i don't feel like most couples could really like share that it's intimacy really with each other like, you should try it <laughs> because you know like regardless like i know it, it's easier maybe for us because of our queerness and like our gender fluidity and ways in which we can see certain archetypes of people as hot um so that's like a practice we have of just like being out in places and being like oh that person's hot and then we both be like yeah we agree we're not gonna do anything about it but like we just we see it like, you know, you know or or maybe we will like who knows but it's 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 just not i think there's like I've been in cishet monogamous relationships before in my life and it is not easy because I feel like there has to be a level of like secrecy when mm. you, when you watch porn, when you see somebody on the street who you find attractive and, and in that 
paradigm, there's really not a lot of ways you can bring your actual feelings to the table and have it be celebrated by your partner, which is the hardest part about a relationship style like that. And I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just like something like you can still be monogamous and you can still say like, Hey, that person over there at the table is really hot. I'm drooling over him while you were at the bathroom, you know, but it doesn't mean you're going to do anything about it. It just means you're like expressing yourself and, and something is coming out of you versus being, you know, stagnant, stagnant yeah. or crystallized inside of you. Um, and so we have, because of the relationship style we have adapted to, as well as like the work that we've adapted to, been able to really like effusively been able to have a real level of flow around the way in which we communicate about what's coming up in our individual bodies and being able to support and love each other and respect each other. And sometimes even get on the same table, like, yeah, damn, you're right. That person is hot, you know, or whatever like show me that porn you watched last night because it seems cool you know because I think a lot of people in other relationship styles like do a lot of things that come with a, a height level of dishonesty mm. and shame. which and yeah and shame. dishonesty shame and all these things and and that is also another seed that devolves like you were talking about earlier like communication devolves relationship but so does shame and dishonesty. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.